providing a small glimmer of hope for all those who believe in the ideals of the old world. The new California Republic embodies the pre-war beliefs of democracy, personal liberty, and rule of law. Others have claimed to also represent these old world values by manipulating symbols of the past in an attempt to legitimize their own ambitions. But all other attempts fall flat in the face of the NCR, who, in a steady and great struggle, have revitalized the spirit and ideals of the ones who governed before the Great War. In keeping to its pledge to provide a beacon of liberty, the NCR modeled itself based on the pre-war United States. Today, I will be covering the background and history of the NCR, so sit back and relax as we dive into the humble beginnings of this great nation. of the new California Republic dates back to the dwellers of Vault 15, who emerged around 2097, founding the town of Shady Sands. With the assistance of the Vault Dweller, Aradesh and his daughter, Tandy, led the community into prosperity. With expanding trade routes came cultural exchange, eventually culminating in a movement aiming at forming a national identity. The idea resonated with other wastelanders and won popular support leading to the formation of the new California Republic in Shady Sands in 2186, with a trial council government established to draft the new constitution. Three years later, in 2189, the Republic was officially voted into existence as a federation of five states, organized around major settlements in the wasteland. These states are Shady Sands, Los Angeles, Maxon, The Hub, and Dayglow. Less than a century after its founding, the Republic was a model example of post-apocalyptic success and good morals. Steady expansion led to widespread political development, the establishment of rule of law and its enforcement, security from threats within and outside the borders, as well as a relatively higher standard of living was a reality for the massive population of over 700,000 citizens. The situation improved even further with the Mojave Campaign, and securing vital electricity and water from the Hoover Dam to the Republic. However, the protracted campaign has come at a cost. The death of President Tandy, who cherished the humanitarian values upon which the Republic was founded, resulted in marked changes in its character. The NCR in 2281 was in a period of transition, experiencing rapid economic growth and dramatic political changes, endangering its original grand ideals. 
Nowhere is that more evident than in the morally corrosive, imperialistic Mojave campaign. Championed by President Aaron Kimball and aiming for the unilateral annexation of the city of New Vegas as the sixth state of the Republic, years of the campaign led to a stalemate locking the NCR as the protector of New Vegas from Caesar's Legion. Without a single bottle cap and tax revenue from the New Vegas Strip or concessions from Robert House, proprietor of the New Vegas Strip, who was content to abide by the terms of the Treaty of New Vegas and use 5% of the dam's output for their own ends. This left the Republic overstretched and weighed down with bureaucracy. Unable to properly supply its campaign, the direct result of both General Oliver's insistence on massing troops and resources at the Hoover Dam and Camp McCarran, at the expense of the rest of the Republic's Mojave garrison, and the NCR Senate having cut funding to the Mojave campaign. Meanwhile, NCR citizens continued to come to the Mojave Wasteland, either as traitors, fortune seekers, or citizen soldiers fighting for the Republic, simultaneously swelling New Vegas' economy while dwindling the NCRs. The flag of the New California Republic is directly inspired by the pre-war state of California, which depicts a California grizzly bear on a patch of grass. The NCR would adopt a version of this flag during the formative years as a nation, the first flag of the Republic seen in 2241 depicts a California grizzly bear with two heads, with the abbreviation NCR behind it, as well as the entire state of California and a single red star within the upper left hand corner, and underlined by a thin red bar. By 2281, a simpler design more directly resembling the California state flag was used, the primary differences being the two headed grizzly bear and the amended caption of New California Republic. The NCR abstractly represents progress. While tribals and other wastelanders scratch out a meager existence, citizens of the NCR enjoy the luxuries of a steady economy, health care, laws, and legitimate government. Not to mention the largest regional military to ensure national security. The massive population of the New California Republic means it's composed of a highly diverse number of individuals. Ranging from highly refined inhabitants of the Republic's grand urban centers, merchants and frontier settlers, to the large number of farmers and ranchers responsible for its economic might. That economic power was one of the key factors in the transformation of the society between 2241 and 2281. As survival ceased being a major concern for the vast majority of NCR citizens, the problem of collective welfare has been largely superseded by concerns about individual prosperity. People providing services free of charge are now the exception, rather than the rule, with skilled workers routinely charging for their services, from tailors to surgeons. Moreover, after over 80 years of scavenging, the wastelands of New California have been largely picked clean of salvageable goods. NCR citizens who can still make a living exclusively by scavenging and hunting are an uncommon sight. The combination of these cultural and economic factors led to the rebirth of wage labor. Most citizens have to seek an employer at a mill, factory, or farm, and work to earn their keep and earn money necessary to survive. But these jobs are easy to find in one of the many mills and farms in New California. The citizens themselves hold a variety of opinions on these developments. While many praise the economic strength hammered out by the furnaces of the wasteland, many others decry the loss of communal spirit. Some will even curse the selfishness of other citizens, typically while pursuing goals that are just as selfish. One thing, however, is common. The belief that opportunity has largely dried up at home, and the real fortune awaits further east. The Republic prohibits persecution and discrimination on the basis of gender, ethnicity, sexuality, or religious beliefs, so long as said religion does not advocate violence. Since 2205, it has also protected ghouls and mutants, though enforcement of these rights have been uneven. Even as far as 2281, one can find super mutants tortured by NCR citizens with impunity or politicians who make a career out of anti-mutant bigotry. In general, the Republic is successful in its enforcement of equality laws. However, since the death of President Tandy and the election of President Kimball, there has been some retrenchment. The reactionary undercurrent, especially among males, led to a disproportionately high number of promotions for male military officers, while discourse arguing the differences between males and females has reappeared. 
This extends to active combat zones where female troopers are called out of high alert areas despite the need of troops or skill. Regardless of the setbacks, slavery is outlawed in all NCR territories, with the exception of forced prison labor. Homosexuality is generally accepted in the core states of the Republic, though the frontier territories away from the more civilized center tend to show prejudice. During her long presidency, Tandy enacted legislation that limited the number of cattle heads and the acreage of fields that could be owned by a single person, limiting the power of the Stockmen's Association and the Republican Farmers Committee. Following her death, these restrictions were slowly eroded by each new president and finally overturned by the presidency of Aaron Kimball. As a result, wealthy farmers and ranchers, commonly known as Brahmin barons, exert a disproportionate amount of influence despite having just one vote on paper. The NCR's free market economy is based on two resources. Ever since its inception, great Brahmin herds and vast swaths of land restored to arable condition, providing meat, leather, milk, and other foodstuffs, which are the backbone of the economy of the Republic. As a result, since 2241, much of the Republic's farming and Brahmin herding has been monopolized by Brahmin and agricultural barons, incredibly wealthy individuals who exert a lot of influence thanks to their money. Their success also led to the emergence of cottage industries, such as the rebirth of luxury goods manufacturing and pseudo-journalism reporting on the latest purchases, commissions, and life lessons of the new rich and famous. Other branches of industry have also developed. Light industry including tools, clothes making, mills, and other manufacturing form of a significant part of the Republic's industrial output. Another element of the Republic's economy is its ordnance workshops, producing standardized weapons and armor for the new California Republic Army and Rangers. The ever-expanding trade routes led to the rise of powerful merchant houses such as the Crimson Caravan, the Fargo Traders, and the Gun Runners which continue to all but completely dominate trade within New California. Lucrative government contracts for weapons, ammunition, armor, and other necessities fueling the Republic's expansion solidify their position in the economy. The NCR introduced its own money around the turn of the 22nd century, initially relying on coins minted from gold. By 2241, the economy of the NCR dominated the West Coast and all coins became universal currency. Used by the three regional powers, NCR, Vault City, and New Reno. During this time, bottle caps had become worthless in these regions. The Republic's gold reserves out in the frontier were raided by Brotherhood to the point where the NCR was forced to stop printing new gold coins and to put an end to the raids completely, and directly resulting in the Republic paper money no longer being properly backed with gold. NCR citizens panicked and rushed to reclaim the listed face value of currency from the NCR's remaining gold reserves. Since the NCR was unable to realize these withdrawals, particularly towards the frontier, faith in the currency considerably dropped. In order to contain the financial fallout from the inevitable inflation to come, the NCR government abandoned the gold standard and established fiat currency. Since then, many wastelanders lost faith in it as a medium of worth, both as a result of it not being backed by anything but the government's word and the inevitable inflation. In response to the loss of faith, Merchant consortiums of the hub re-established their own currency, the venerable bottle cap, backing it with water, exchanging a standardized measure of water for caps. By 2281, the NCR dollar was valued at about 40% of a water-backed bottle cap, and only 10% of a silver legion denarius. In the Mojave Wasteland, these notes can be seen in 5, 20, and $100 denominations. The notes are issued by the Republic Reserve Bank located in Angels Bay Boneyard. In 2281, the current treasurer of the Republic and the head of the NCR Treasury is John Michael Henderson, whose signature can be seen in the front face of all NCR notes found in the Mojave Wasteland. Since 2241, New California has been radically growing in size. Their growth has allowed the NCR to become the largest known post-war country with a total population above 700,000 by 2241. The Republic's massive population has meant a diverse range of commerce and the development of sprawling urban centers. The NCR's sheer number of citizens gives its armed forces a large pool of manpower the NCR army can conscript at any time. When properly armed and led, 
the army is capable of defeating even the Enclave and the Brotherhood of Steel without suffering total Pyrrhic victories. The principal reason is that the NCR can defeat any force through attrition, withering enemy numbers through ranged fire while giving ground as necessary. This was the favored tactic by Chief Hanlon when fighting the Legion in the First Battle of Hoover Dam, allowing it to secure victory through the tactical use of surrounding terrain. However, General Lee Oliver, wanting a decisive victory over the Legion, planned to use the NCR's military might to amass troops at Hoover Dam to overwhelm and outfight Caesar's Legion during the Second Battle, and further hoping to rout, pursue, and destroy any remaining Legionary forces. The NCR's size has likely been a strong influencing factor in the expansionist policies of its political and military leaders. The manpower at the disposal of President Kimball has him sending rangers into parts of Baja while also contesting Hoover Dam against Caesar's Legion. The NCR's massive population also acts as a deterrent. The Brotherhood of Steel and the Van Graffs are hesitant to retaliate against the NCR because of the sheer size of their armed forces. While the NCR's huge population is an immense advantage, it has its drawbacks. The population growth in New California has strained the Republic's agricultural capacity, and without acquiring new territories and sources of food, the NCR would potentially suffer food shortages by 2291, and eventually famine. The Office of Science and Industry has started research projects to address the matter and improve agricultural capacity, including computerized farm management and salvage operations to find any old world research to address its food problems. The government has also enacted the Thaler Act to incentivize farmers to move east and work farms to increase agricultural output. Many migrate eastwards regardless, as the common perception is that opportunities for success in the NCR have dried up. Unless you're willing to perform wage labor in the Republic's numerous farms, ranches, and factories or mills, or become a Brahmin Baron overnight. The only way to strike gold is to make for the frontier. Though seen as necessary from a strategic perspective, expansionism has also led to problems. Key among these is supplying the Republic's armed forces. Units and armaments are shifted according to strategic needs, such as areas around New Vegas and the Mojave Wasteland after 2277. Areas of relative peace are not considered a priority. As such, the occupation is maintained by conscripts with green recruits armed with surplus weapons and whatever gear the quartermasters issue them. Some recruits may not even receive body armor. The New California Republic is a federal republic based on the principle of representative democracy, established as the successor of the pre-war United States. The executive branch is the council, headed by the president of the New California Republic and their vice president elected by Congress. When elected, the president and their cabinet serve a term of five years before elections are held again. Effectively, a president can serve for life as there are no term limits to the presidency as there was in the United States. The Congress, also known as the Senate, forms the legislative branch and is staffed by representatives elected in popular elections by citizens of each state that the Republic is composed of. Apart from legislation, Congress also acts as the advisory body to the government of the Republic. While the general term for representative is congressman, the states themselves use a variety of titles. The terms are used interchangeably and used widely outside the chambers of council and Congress, but within them, they can be used as insults to spark furious debates. Each state represented in the NCR Congress sends one representative to Shady Sands. The judicial branch is comprised of courts and judges ruling in accordance with the NCR's laws, and each citizen has the right to vote for a representative of their choice to sit in the Hall of Congress. The New California Republic is a federation of five states. The NCR also have several territorial holdings that are prospective in becoming a state, such as parts of Northern California, Oregon, Baja, and the Mojave. Other cities also joined the NCR between 2241 and 2281, as territories were incorporated into the existing five states. No new states were formed after the initial founding, with New Vegas and the Mojave being the only prospective territory poised for becoming the sixth state of the Union after its potential annexation. Both citizens and non-citizens enjoy the protection of the NCR's courts. 
although courts tend to favor citizens in disputes. Freedom of religion is considered a right within the NCR, as long as the religion is not violent or psychotic. At the same time, it enforces a strict separation of church and state thanks to Tandy's policies. Equality legislation is a prohibition of discrimination based on gender, ethnicity, sexuality, or aforementioned religious beliefs. Mutants have also been protected since 2205, but enforcing this part of the law has been spotty. Intellectual property laws have also been enacted and remain a source of ongoing controversy, particularly patents. Followers of the apocalypse are particularly staunch critics of the latter. Marriages and divorces are likewise handled by the courts. Immigration into the NCR is open to both humans and mutants, provided they are law-abiding and peaceful. The process is simple. The person in question moves to an NCR territory, presents their claim for immigration, undergoes citizenship training, and once their application is processed, is granted the status of a provisional citizen. Full citizenship is granted shortly after. All registered citizens are required to pay any appropriate and associated taxes. Territories can petition the Republic for annexation. Once the petition is accepted, the NCR grants the town territorial status and establishes the lease and army presence in the location to establish the rule of law and eliminate lawbreakers. Once this process is completed, the territory can apply for full statehood. Between 2241 and 2281, no new territory was granted full statehood. The frontier New Vegas is the closest to becoming the sixth state of the Union. The Republic dedicates itself to bringing peace, security, and justice to the people within and without their borders. When the NCR can exercise rule of law on its criminals, it has done so accordingly to the severity of their crimes, with the death penalty being reserved for serious offenders. Murder does not automatically translate into a capital sentence. Punishment for criminals inside the NCR proper means serving prison time at any number of correctional facilities and performing manual labor for the NCR's work release program. However, outside the NCR's territory and entering into the Mojave Wasteland is a different story. The NCR Army isn't keen on peacekeeping activities and usually swiftly punishes crimes committed in and around New Vegas with death. Part of this includes the setting of bounties and delegating the responsibility of capture to able civilians that can bring in criminals that have eluded NCR lawmen or military. At least for the military, bounties require proof in the form of an intact head. Anything less conclusive results in a fraction of the bounty being rewarded. Common criminal laws in the NCR include a ban on slavery, gambling, and prostitution, a ban on open carry of weapons, although concealed carry is permitted, a ban on public drunkenness or drug use, dismissing caravan members suspected of theft without pay as per NCR caravan bylaws. Although they are rigidly enforced in major NCR population centers, they tend to become more relaxed on the frontier. One major exception to this rule is the pursuit of former Enclave members. Due to their involvement in the various atrocities and attempted genocide, membership in the organization is grounds for arrest, trial as a war criminal, and life imprisonment. Failing that, NCR rangers and bounty hunters are authorized to pursue targets. This policy was adopted after the Enclave's defeat by the NCR's government under the left-leaning President Tandy. This same rule of law also applies to prisoners of war. With laws enacting during President Tandy's administration, the NCR recognizes the rights of prisoners of war and approaches their care humanely and free from abuse. Most officers find these laws to be constricting, but resourceful officers find ways around it by employing the services of outside consultants. Laws pertaining to soldiers are quite severe. Cowardice before the enemy, especially desertion, is punished with death by hanging or to be shot on sight. Dishonorable conduct usually leads to a court-martial and may result in execution by firing squad or particularly severe crimes. In theory, this is a sound and well-balanced system, but in practice, every state tries to assert its independence and work towards furthering its own agenda. There is much friction between the states of Hub and Shady Sands, usually related to the trade rights and caravan routes. The president is the biggest factor in deciding on the course the republic should take. For example, under Tandy, who served over 10 terms as president, 
something Caesar mocks as an indicative of monarchy rather than democracy, the NCR has developed substantially, focusing efforts on rebuilding pre-war infrastructure and restarting technological development, then expanding into Northern California using a combination of diplomacy and subterfuge to overcome Vault City and New Reno. Under Aaron Kimball, the NCR became more imperialistic and expansive, pursuing a foreign policy of expansion by force of arms, all the while overextending itself in the process, thanks in no small part to General Oliver's incompetence and bureaucratic red tape. However, presidents don't enjoy immunity. The most obvious example is Wendell Peterson. Voted out of office for his failure to react to the deaths of NCR citizens in the Mojave region. However, the most precarious position was that of President Tandy. Though remembered as a landmark figure in the Republic's history, in 2241, she headed a tenuous coalition with the right-wing Frank Carlson as her vice president. Her plans for northward expansion hinged on the diplomatic annexation of Vault 15, and failure of this policy would have been an embarrassment sufficient enough to remove her from office replaced by Roger Wesson, a predominant counselor in Brahmin Baron. The bishops of New Reno, while negotiating for Reno's membership in the NCR, were also attempting to create a more favorable environment. With Weston marked for assassination by John Bishop, his death would allow Carlson to force Tandy into retirement, claiming her involvement in Weston's assassination, lining his own pockets and leading the Republic to stagnation. And if Carlson was assassinated by the bishops, the death of such a popular figure would have galvanized right-wing elements, leading them to seize control of Congress, which would set the Republic on the path to military rule and providing a safe haven for enclave survivors in the ranks of the NCR military. Beyond politics, significant pressure is also exerted on the political and economic direction of the NCR by a variety of private interests. In particular, the Brahmin barons whose wealth gives them great influence at the ballot box and whose needs are often placed first by officials seeking support in their political ambitions. With the armed forces, the gunrunners gain special dispensation and influence, as they are the primary contributor to the NCR's weapon arsenal. Everywhere, monopolies like the Crimson Caravan and similar trading families dominate the trade routes and use their wealth to gain influence within the NCR's government and extort large amounts of money. Smaller competitors who are unable to compete with both the large competition as well as the high taxes are inevitably muscled out. Subordinated to the President and the Congress, the military of the Republic is one of its most distinguishing elements. The core component, the NCR Army, has thousands of servicemen, either volunteers or draftees, organized into divisions and battalions, equipped with standardized weapons and armor, and with varying degrees of training and competence. They are the proverbial sledgehammer, a tool used to crush enemies of the Republic and build order in the lands under its control, as well as a shield, protecting it from harm that may come from its numerous enemies. Supported by the industrial might of the Republic and unique technologies reclaimed from the wasteland, like vertebrates confiscated from the Enclave, they are the foundation of the security policy of the Republic. On the civilian side of the spectrum, lie marshals and police formations responsible for enforcing law of the Republic within the territory of the NCR. The premier unit is the New California Republic Rangers, who grew out of a paramilitary abolitionist militia dedicated to the eradication of slavery in the NCR. They have grown into one of the most professional and deadly military outfits in the waste and were folded under the military command of the army. Commonly respected for their valor and skill in battle, the Rangers are folk heroes and enjoy an unblemished heroic reputation and access to the top-line weapons and armor. Often coming from recovered and restored pre-war goods, the Republic practices what it preaches, and the military, like society, makes no distinction between the genders when it comes to serving in the military. Super mutants and ghouls are also known to serve in the elite Rangers. In addition, Military honors are awarded for valor, such as the Star of the Sierra Madre. The NCR is one of the only entities after the war to have their own division dedicated to foreign relations, possessing their own Department of State. It is responsible for the country's embassies and also holds the ability to empower individuals with the authority to act on behalf of the government. Many people in the western wastelands have mixed feelings about the NCR. 
Some people strongly support the Republic's goals of spreading democracy and the rule of law, and others ardently oppose their methods of controlling everything they come into contact with. With wastelanders who were used to having no more than a mayor or sheriff, now suddenly being part of a complex political structure and having to pay taxes. Some view it as a loss of their frontier lifestyles that once defined them. As the NCR's power and territory grew, it made progressively stronger enemies who would test the resolve of the Republic. Under President Tandy, the NCR made slow but sustainable territorial expansion, allowing towns and other small communities who were impressed by the principles of the NCR to join on their own volition while defending their borders from hostile raiders like the once legendary Vipers and Jackals who would be ravaged by the NCR's military until they became broken shadows of their former glory. Eventually taming Southern California, these achievements would garner such respect for President Tandy that the people would come to adore her, and tribals outside of the NCR's borders would refer to her as the Great Mother. Viewing the NCR's growth and success as a threat to their already stagnating power and influence, the Brotherhood of Steel would launch a military campaign with the goal of pacifying the NCR and asserting its dominance over the wasteland and its technology. The NCR would ultimately prevail and force the Brotherhood into retreat and hiding. The NCR had defeated their strongest opponent yet. After the death of President Tandy, her successors would gradually change the direction of the NCR, rapidly expanding the Republic's borders into every direction in a more imperialistic fashion. They sacrificed some of the NCR's principles and moral high ground in the process. Tribals that once revered the Great Mother began to become domesticated as the nation swept through the tribal lands. Under President Aaron Kimball, the NCR's expansion had led it to the Mojave Wasteland, where it would encounter the impressive city of New Vegas and the even more promising Hoover Dam. However, it would also encounter its greatest enemy to date, Caesar's Legion, across the Colorado River. The NCR initially had great success in the Mojave Wasteland setting up bases and even an embassy on the Strip. The front line of the new conflict between the NCR and Caesar's Legion moved towards the Colorado River. The Legion attacked the NCR with its full strength during the First Battle of Hoover Dam. The NCR successfully repulsed the Legion's assault on Hoover Dam, devastating the Legion's elite forces by luring them into a trap at Boulder City in the process. After their defeat, the Legion regularly conducted raids on the west side of the Colorado River even creating permanent bases at Cottonwood Cove and sacking towns like Nipton and Nelson with little response from the NCR. Known wars and military conflicts in which the NCR was involved include those with the Enclave, Brotherhood of Steel, Great Khans, Legion, and the Raiders. Overall, the Republic can be readily described as the most advanced entity in post-war nuclear America. While smaller organizations do possess more advanced weapons, armor, or tools, like the Enclave, Free Economic Zone of New Vegas, or the Xi, no one can rival the Republic's agriculture, industry, economy, and military, with the sole exceptions of Caesar's Legion and the Brotherhood of Steel. The keystones of the Republic's economic might are its Brahmin herds and arable land, painstakingly recultivated with primitive tools that they had at their disposal. Aided strongly by the followers of the apocalypse, the Republic thrived. When the shift in foreign policy occurred with Kimball's election, the relations soured and the Republic eventually lost the followers' support. However, disillusioned followers flocked to the government and formed the Office of Science and Industry in 2275, becoming a dedicated NCR-aligned research and development house. By 2281, their achievements included implementing computer simulations to aid with agricultural planning and cultivation, maximizing the output of Hoover Dam and restoring the power grid between the Mojave and Shady Sands, and even began developing solutions for a famine projected to affect the Republic in 2291. However, the technology is not limited to just agriculture. The Hoover Dam powers every city and major settlement in New California. While the OSI continues to redevelop and implement new technologies and fields such as medicine, engineering, and biology. Building on the strong infrastructure built during the 52 years of Tandy's presidency, which includes roads, railways, transportation, manufacturing, forts, and more, the OSI increased the NCR's technological advantage over its competitors. 
this technological edge is nothing if not immense. By 2281, the Republic's powerful merchant companies have access to facilities and materials, allowing them to manufacture standardized armaments, weapons, and ammunition, to fully outfit the largest standing army in the wasteland. To the point of different companies actively competing with each other for supply contracts or even considered an unofficial branch of the army. Advanced technologies are also harnessed by the Republic for the benefit of its citizens. The annexation of Vault City granted the Republic access to advanced medical and scientific technologies, including organ cloning, performance enhancing implants, armor grafts, and other refined procedures. Other advanced technologies utilized by the Republic include satellite communications, power armor taken from the Brotherhood, and even global positioning system satellites. The NCR also has the ability to construct concrete bunkers on vital front lines, such as the Colorado River. Infrastructure is also a prominent success of the NCR's technology, as the Republic is known to have used railroads and uses refurbished vertebrates salvaged from its war with the Enclave. One example of this is the Bear Force One, the vehicle that Aaron Kimball arrives in to make a speech at the Hoover Dam in 2281. The culmination of all of these technological developments are the reason why the NCR dominates this region. And that concludes the somewhat complete history of the New California Republic. Did you learn anything new about the NCR? Do you think the NCR is a legitimate successor to the pre-war United States? And do you think they have what it takes to win the Second Battle of Hoover Dam? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and as always, please like and subscribe for more content.